There's this thing in New England every year in September called the Big E, and I love it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I love it because uh, I love to go get mini donuts. But there's something else I love about the Big E. Every year, I make my way to the one end that has all the livestock, the cattle, <clears throat> and the sheep, and the goats, and all these things. And usually, I'm with my wife, and I uh, walk back into that building. It's a huge building, and I just walk among the sheep, and I'm watching the shepherds, the people that are caring for the sheep. Some of them are being sheared. Some of them are being combed out or cared for. Some of them are being fed. Many of them are just sitting around, laying around in their sheep folds uh, and among their sheep friends. And it just every year wins and captivates my heart. You know why? Because I love being a sheep. I love being a sheep. And so every time I go into this building, I look at these sheep and I look at how their shepherds are caring for them and how they're taking the weight off of the wool and how they're nourishing and flourishing and and how they're growing wool and how they're just being what they were created to be. And every time I see this, I think, man, this is what God calls me. That's me. I see these sheep and I think that's me to God. And uh, and, and it, it says a million things in one metaphor, in one picture right there before me. It says a million things and it just appropriates so many passages of scripture that Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, that Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, and that Psalm 100 today tells me who I am. And I don't know where this video finds you, but I know you, if you're human, <clears throat> you you struggle like I do with feelings of meaning meaning and value and uh, a reason to live and, and, and waking up in the morning and confusion and, and chaos in the world around us and wondering where are we and who are we and and, 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 and aren't you glad we have a good shepherd who secures us, who calls us his own, who invites us to know him, who brings us into his sheepfold and says, I've got you. <clears throat> I have got you. And so I want you to join me today in Psalm 100. I'm Pastor Kerry. This is Growing in the Gospel, and we are slow walking through Psalm 100. Today, I just want to meditate with you for a few minutes on the idea of what a joy it is to be a sheep. Psalm 100 verse 1, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now we talked about these verses yesterday, that God wants us to make some noise. He wants us to serve him. What a privilege. We don't have to serve him. We don't ought to serve him. We get to serve him. And when you know Jesus and you know his love and you comprehend how amazing and and awesome and wonderful <clears throat> he is, excuse me, then you just want to serve him. In, in fact, you do what this verse says. You can serve the Lord with gladness. <laughs> There's no oppression in serving God. I I just got to declare, I just got to go on record. I love being a pastor. I love my church. I love our church family. I love our school family. I love our students and our staff. I love serving the Lord. It is a source of great joy knowing. Now, there's a lot of burdens. There's a lot of trials. There's a lot of hardships. It's kind of like two train tracks, and i got to decide which one to live on, which rail am I going to live on, but they're both going at the same time. But as well as there's a burdensome rail, there's a glad, glad joy-inducing aspect to loving and serving God. You know, God says, come before his presence with singing. You have access right now to the throne room of heaven, and he wants to hear you sing. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your heart. He wants to give you a reason to sing, and then he wants you to sing. Verse three, know ye that the Lord, he is God. He wants you to know. He wants you to rest today. Like settle this in your heart. Reminds me of the verse, be still and know that I am God. He wants you to know with assurance, with certainty, with calm, restful, unworried uh, durability that he is God and he is your God. And he has, it is he that has made us. He made you, which means you're valuable. You have meaning. You are not an accident. You didn't get here by a cosmic, randomly evolved biological matter. You didn't spontaneously combust. No, you are the specific design and creation of God and he knew you before he formed you in the womb and he has called you into this moment. He has assigned you to this moment. I'm reminded of the first verses of Jeremiah when Jeremiah was called by God. He was a young man. He served the Lord for 40 years, 
but he was a young man growing up under the reign of a man, young man named Josiah, Josiah, a, a, a child king, basically. And under Josiah, as he was a teenager, the nation experienced a massive revival. And Jeremiah was being swept up in that revival. And God came to him and called him and said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet among the nations. And Jeremiah says, what? No, who, me? No, not me. And God said, don't say that. You're not a child. You're my specific design, created being, and I'm calling you to be a prophet. I, I, I know you and I ordained you. What, is it, what does that mean? It means you have an ultimate identity in God. You have a creator who designed you and placed you for a purpose into this moment, into this day, into your context with a very specific assignment. He has ordained you. He didn't just ordain Jeremiah. He ordained you for this moment, for such a time as this. So it is he that hath made us, Psalm 100, verse 3 says, and not we ourselves. I, no, nobody is a self-made individual. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't make ourselves. We don't achieve our greatest achievements on our own. No, we are his people. If you know Jesus, you are God's people. You're God's person. If you don't know him, then, then, then invite him into your life and Call on him to be your savior. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Be saved now, today, and become God's person. And become, and look at this, and the sheep of his pasture. God says, and the psalmist, the psalmist that's writing the psalm is really just celebrating. And I hope you are too with me right now as I'm celebrating these realities that we are not our own and we don't want to be. We are the sheep of his pasture. So when I see these sheep at the Big E, I, uh, I see vulnerability, I see fear, I see fragility. These are vulnerable animals. They could not defend themselves. They couldn't really take good care of themselves. They are totally dependent animals, okay? And I think, man, that is me. I struggle in this thing called life. And I need a shepherd. I need, I need to be totally dependent. When God calls you a sheep, he's not saying you're stupid. He's not saying you have little value. He is saying you're precious and you are vulnerable and you are fragile and you need care. You, he's simply saying you are dependent. And it's a really good day in your life when you realize you need God. You need an ultimate shepherd and caregiver in your life. You need a good father. And you can have one through Jesus. So uh, being a sheep means you're vulnerable, you're fragile, you are totally dependent today. But when I see the sheep at the Big E and they're being so well cared for, they're being fed, they're being surrounded with protection and safety, they're, they're in the presence of other sheep, which gives, which gives them a sense of security, community. They're being cared for by people that love and nurture and and want them to flourish in health. I think this is God's heart for me. He, He goes before me. He's behind me. He's beside me. He's under me. He's above me. He's totally surrounding me. He is a good, loving father and a very present caregiver, and he wants to shepherd my soul today. He wants me to to lay down in green pastures. He wants to lead me beside still waters. He wants to comfort me with his rod and his staff. He, He wants to be my good shepherd, so much so that he gave his life for me. And I just celebrate. I love being a sheep. And you know what else I think when I see those sheep? They're not worried about becoming anything else. They're just being who they are. They're just being what God made them to be. And there's something about life. When you leave off of all of your fake scripts and all of your oppressive pursuits and not that some of these goals and things aren't good. God puts desires in our lives and he calls us to serve him and to, and to pursue these things. Paul said, I'm pressing toward the mark. But when it becomes self-centric, self-centered, and when it becomes, we drive ourselves harder than God would lead us. When, when we stop following him and begin following our own agenda and, and we're like, God, get on my track. Life becomes so burdensome, so hard. But there's this thing in life when you release these things and you just come into God's pasture and come into the yoke that Jesus wants you to come into. It's so much easier. It's so much better. And and the pressure comes off and you're free to be who God made you to be. And you don't have to be anything else or anybody else. You just be who he made you to be doing what he called you to do restfully, joyfully, productively, fruitfully in flourishing 
spiritually, emotionally. Uh, you can just be the sheep of his pasture. So I want to leave you with that thought today that um, you, you probably have taken on some burdens that you can lay down. You've probably, you probably got some things on your mind you can put back on his. And you can just kind of be at rest in your sheepfold today. You've got a good shepherd. And you don't have to worry about a lot of things except for being his sheep. And, uh, and, and be the person he's called you to be and let him guide you, let him care for you, let him love you, let him lead you. It's just a really good life to be a sheep and to have a good shepherd. If you don't know Jesus, you can know him now. And if you do, then take hope, take rest, take joy in the fact that you are his sheep. He's a good shepherd. That is Growing in the Gospel for today. Hope you have a great day. I'm praying for you, and I'll see you tomorrow.